So with 1.18 on the way, and if you don't know what that is, it's essentially Caves and Cliffs Part 2. But basically, with that nearly being out, support for the brand new Caves and Cliffs is already out on Bedrock. So today, I'm going to show you what will happen if you convert your 1.17 world to the brand new Caves and Cliffs update for 1.18. So let's begin. So let me give you the rundown. We are in a 1.17 world. I made it in 1.17. I did not change any of the settings except enable creative mode. If we go down to Bedrock, which we can dig down by doing this, let's actually turn on coordinates. You can see we're at 38, and if we dig down to about 5, ooh, lava. But what I was saying, if we dig down to about level 5, we should see Bedrock. You can see that the void is beneath the bedrock. We can go under it. We can see that there's just bedrock going all over. Now the question is, what will happen if we convert it? Will there just be an air gap going all the way down to negative 64? What will happen? Will it get overridden with the brand new caves? Or will something else happen? Let's find out. So first we're going to save and quit. Now make sure if you're going to do this on your own world, just be careful, you might mess something up and I don't recommend you play on it yet because they might change the technique on how to convert it. So I just do this for testing right now, but it's completely safe because it makes a copy of your world. So for example, we've got the 1.18 world here, it's in 1.17, but we are going to convert it to 1.18. So first we need to make sure we're on the latest version and scroll down until you see caves and cliffs. It's under the experiments tab. So you click it and it says activate experimental gameplay. Be careful, you're about to create your copy of your world with experiments turned on. This new world might crash, break or not work with future updates. That's why I say you shouldn't just start playing on this if you have a survival world or just some kind of world because it's not fully out yet and the conversion is not really stable yet. And it might crash your game, it might be laggy and I just recommend you don't play on it because things might not work or you might just lose the world. So if you are fine with it, click activate experiments. You can always go back. But now we have copy of 1.18, which is actually on 1.18. Now that we click on it, it should start to load. It might take longer to load because it's generating new chunks. When we enter, we should be in the exact same spot. But look at that, there's more bedrock. And if we go down, we see that there's just more bedrock. So long story short, the void that connects from 0 to negative 64 is filled completely with bedrock. From top to bottom, all bedrock. But let's check out what it looks like if we go to the edge of that bedrock border and see what it looks like compared to the actual caves. So to do that, we need to go away from where we floated up. I haven't walked around a lot in this world, so it shouldn't be that hard to find a part that hasn't loaded yet. And just so you know, the only parts that get activated and updated are the parts that you haven't gone to yet. So any chunks that you've never loaded will work. This seems good enough. Let's dig down here, maybe here, there's a little hole. We can just dig down to zero. And if we can go past, oh, there's a water cave. This is a new cave actually. So that means we are definitely in a new chunk that hasn't loaded before. So we can go down here, just keep digging. And if we go down to zero, we should see yeah, the, we are at level 4, which there should be bedrock, there is still caves. And if we dig down more, we might possibly find a big cave. So we didn't see one there, but you can see there is bedrock here now, which looks pretty cool. So there's actually bedrock all the way at like negative 64. And that should connect to any of the previous chunks where the bedrock goes down to negative 64. So on the Z corner, it says we're at 452. So let's go back to around 00. zero and see if we can see the border. Sadly, we can't use spectator mode, which would make this way easier. So we're just gonna have to keep digging. So I found another cave, and if we keep going this way, we should find the border, which should be full of bedrock. Now we might actually have to dig down, and we might already be at the old coordinates so we are still at the old coordinates but if we keep going this way we should eventually see bedrock right in front of us oh 
Oh, and there you have it. This bedrock here. So that means this is the difference between a new chunk that we didn't load in the previous 1.17 and a chunk that we did load in 1.17. And you can see that I think they do make it a little differentiated. And you can see that there's just little chunks of bedrock here. So I'm going to assume that the entire thing isn't filled. So my next question is, if this is where the edge is, if we go back up to just where bedrock ends, should there just be a giant hole that takes us down to negative 64? Let's see. So if we turn back to the original block levels, you can see that level 5 is kind of where bedrock starts. And you can see that there is stone and stuff around here. Just past here, there should be no bedrock going all the way down until negative 64. Which means we can go this way from this cave. And eventually we should see a big hole just going all the way down. And it does get a bit weird, but oh, you can see? This is an old cave or old chunks. There are little gaps of air here in between the bedrock. From what I see here, this kind of shows what I meant. So let's say that we were mining. If we were mining this way, bedrock should end, like, keep going this way. But because we didn't load these chunks, technically, if we just go down here, this just takes us to the new chunks, so there would be a hole. Now, it might be pretty hard to find it in your world because you need to find where the chunk ends and where there's a new cave. But if you find it just like I did, you can see that there is just going to be a drop down. So... Be careful when you mine if you are going to use this version. But that's about it. It's pretty simple and it's really easy to do. And I wouldn't really worry about this ruining your world. But the only downside is that you have to go really far to find the new caves. And if you've worked in a world for a really long time, that's going to be a real struggle. But now it's time for me to ask you a question. Are you going to do this? Are you going to update your world to 1.18? Or are you going to start a new one? Or are you just not going to update it? Because I'm going to assume that you might be able to not opt in to change it and just keep it all the original terrain. Because I feel like a couple people might actually do that. And the reason I did this on Bedrock is because it is technically out on Java, but I'll be quite honest, it runs really bad on my computer, like 40 FPS, and sometimes it's just buggy and crashes all the time. So doing it on Bedrock, not only is it properly supported and integrated into the newest version but it just works way better i'm getting all the fps i need and i hope this video helped you a lot because it definitely seems like a lot of people would be interested on how this would affect their world but that's about it if you enjoyed the video make sure to give the video a like it really helps me out and make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you want more content like this and also comment and share if you want maybe leave some feedback for what i should do next time share with your friends tell your friends tell your family and that's about it. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.